What happens when Erdő Spál, an outstanding Hungarian mathematician garnering international fame with his work ethic and countless important theorems, and Szőke Favi Nagy Béla, one of Hungary's most respected mathematicians, combine their genius? What happens when these two mathematical titans unite? Well, meet Frank. He's just a simple concave polygon living in Flatland. These two men figured out a way to make him convex. That's easy. I can just move these points here. Wait. Who are you? Besides, that's cheating. Why? Isn't he convex? Well, yes, but the point was to only use flips. What do you mean? Choose two vertices on Frank and mirror everything between them on the line connecting them. See? Hmm, like this? Well, there goes Frank. I guess I shouldn't be giving them names. Let's start over. We need to make sure that the polygon remains non-self-intersecting. Therefore, we can only reflect on a side of the polygon's convex hull. The convex hull? The convex hull is the smallest convex polygon containing our polygon. Think of it like wrapping a rubber band around it. So, is this legal? Yes, it is. But it's still concave. Do I have to do it multiple times? Exactly. Let me try. I did it! Good job! But how do I know this always works? Well, first we need to discuss what happens at each flip. The perimeter is constant, do you agree? Yes, uh, this side moves here and that side moves there, but we didn't change the length of any of them, so the perimeter stays the same. Now, choose any point inside the polygon and the vertex. Let's look at how the distance changes when we flip this vertex. We can divide the distance to the new point into two parts and rotate the top one like this. The triangle inequality tells us that the new distance is always greater than or equal to the previous distance. So, after flip, the flip vertices get farther from the polygon's points. That seems intuitive. However, we also know that the flipped vertices cannot be farther than half of the polygon's perimeter, which is constant. This means that these distances approach a certain value. This is what we call a limit. If we knew this limit distance from three internal points, we could just draw three circles with those distances and we would know that their intersection is what the vertex approaches. This is a limit vertex. If we do the same for all vertices, we get the limit polygon. We know that this limit polygon is convex, since we can't flip it anymore, because then one of the vertices would get farther from the internal points than the limit distance. So does that mean that if I flip the vertices enough times I get a convex polygon? Not exactly. What we do know now is that if you were able to flip it infinitely many times, you would definitely be able to get a convex shape. We are going to prove that we can do it by finite steps, but first we need to talk about a characteristic that convex polygons have, called convexity tolerance. Take any two adjacent sides of a convex polygon, you can connect the midpoints like this. Draw discs touching the line with the vertices as center points. However, if we move the vertices in their disc, they won't cross the line, Therefore, the angle of these segments won't pass 180 degrees. Notice that the radius of these disks are equal. If we do this for all triplets of adjacent vertices and take the smallest radius, we get the polygon's convexity tolerance. We can draw disks with this radius around all vertices. Moving any of the vertices inside their disks keeps the polygon convex. Let's look at a single vertex. We know that it approaches its final position. 
If we draw the convexity tolerance disk around the final position, we can be sure that the vertex enters it after a certain number of steps, since it must get closer and closer to its final position. If it never enters the disk, then this point couldn't possibly be its final position. We never specified on which vertex we do this on, so this must be true for our vertices. Why does this help us? It can still take an infinite number of steps to reach the final polygon, no? Correct, but we don't need to reach the final polygon. We only need to make the polygon convex, and we know that it's convex if all of the vertices enter their respective disks. I see now. That's a nice proof, but what's the point? Why do I even want to flip sides when I can drag points around if I want to make a polygon convex? And why do I even want to make a polygon convex in the first place? Very valid questions. First of all, you must admit that mathematical puzzles are fun. Yes, it was fun, but why did I just spend this much time on something that isn't useful? Well, it looks cool. Most importantly, a lot of discoveries in math seem useless at first, but later on they prove to be helpful in some unexpected areas. Now enjoy a relaxing clip of polygons unfolding. 